Happy Sabbath. How are you? I hope you all had a nice week. We are grateful that we have a Heavenly Father that watches over us, right? And we thank Him that when we go to Him, He's always there ready to receive us. May He guide us and give us wisdom as we journey on in this imperfect world. May He continue to protect each one of us and our families and give us peace and joy. Let's continue with this book, Christ Object Lesson. We are on the chapter on talents. Let me read to you. And this verse is about the last servant, the one with the one talent. Matthew 25, verse 18. The man who received the one talent went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Well, this is the servant with the smallest gift who did not improve his talent. Through this parable, a warning is given to all those who feel that their blessing is too small and therefore they excuse themselves from serving God. And they thought that if they could do some great things, they would gladly accept it. But because they can serve only in a small scale, they thought it would be okay for them to do nothing. The author said, they are wrong. In the parable, when the Lord was distributing gifts to his servants, he was actually testing their character. The man who neglected to improve his talent proved himself to be an unfaithful servant. The author said, if he had received five talents, he probably would have done the same thing, bury them too, like he had buried the one. He misused the one talent so that he did not value the gift of heaven. What else did the Bible say about someone like that? In Luke 16, verse 10, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. We often think certain responsibilities are not important because they are small and no one will notice. But they also said no matter how small is the task, it requires the same character of discipline. There are really no non-essentials in the Christian's life. Our character building will be at risk when we undervalue the importance of the little things. I continue with Luke 16. Verse 10, he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. By being unfaithful in even the smallest duties, man is not fulfilling the responsibility that's been assigned to him by his creator. This unfaithfulness will have its consequence. What kind of consequence? This person will miss the blessing of character growing in grace, power, and strength. And because of that, it will influence his ability to overcome Satan's temptations. Moreover, because of not seeking divine guidance and little things, he would not be entrusted to do great things which he was waiting for. By acting according to what he has been accustomed to, bad habits will keep repeating itself and habits will become character. And most importantly, the author said, once the character is formed, the destiny is decided. Look at the Bible example of Daniel and his three friends. God brought Daniel and his friends into connection with great men of Babylon so that these heathen men would be able to make aware of the valley of the true religion. In the midst of a nation of idolaters, Daniel was to represent the character of God. How did he become fitted for such an honor position? It is because he honored and obeyed God in the smallest duties, and the Lord cooperated with him in doing great things. 
Let me read to you Daniel one, verse seventeen. To Daniel and his companions, God gave knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. As God called Daniel to witness for Him in Babylon, so He calls us to be His witnesses in the world today. Even Christ, in His life on earth, taught us the lesson of careful attention to the little things. The tremendous burden of redeeming the world weighed continually on Him, and yet, even when He was Teaching and healing, using all his energies from his mind and body, and text him to the utmost. Still, he noticed the most simple things in life and in nature. If you recall his most instructive lessons about the kingdom of God, were demonstrated through the simple things of nature. He noticed the little things of life. And also, he did not overlook the necessities and needs of his humble servants. He hears their every cry of need. Do you remember the faith of that woman in the crowd who had a bleeding problem? Christ knew, and he responded. And do you remember when he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead? He reminded the parents what that she must have something to eat. And even when Christ rose from the tomb, he didn't forget to fold and put carefully the proper place, the grave cloths. The work we Christian are called to do is to cooperate with Christ to save souls. To save souls is the commission that Christ has commanded his follower to do. You remember in Matthew twenty eight nineteen to twenty, Christ said for us to go ye to the world and make disciples. The author said to neglect the work is to prove disloyal to Christ. But in order to accomplish this work, we must follow his example of being faithful, and pay. Conscientious attention to the little things, and this is the secret of success in every Christian endeavors. The Lord desires His people to excel through accepting the blessing that He wants to give us. He wants us to reach the highest rung of the ladder to glorify Him through the grace. Of God, every provision has been made for us to show that we are following better plans of life than those who are following the world's way. When we follow God's plan, the world would be led to see that through Christ, His people has a superior intellect, in understanding, in skill and knowledge. It is because. They believe in God and His power that works on the human hearts. Like the parable gifts of talents, that ranged from one to five talents, those of us who did not receive the large endowment of gifts need not become discouraged. Let us use whatever we have, and furthermore, be faithful in guarding. Every weak tendency we have in our character, seeking divine grace to help us to grow strong. Please follow me in reading the following quote from Ellen White. And I must admit that I am guilty of this. She said, "Habits of negligence should be resolutely overcome. Many think it a sufficient excuse." For the grossest errors to plead forgetfulness, but do they not, as well as others, possess intellectual faculties? Then they should discipline their minds to be retentive. It is a sin to forget, 
a sin to be negligent. Wow, that is serious. Well, we grow old and we, be, we can become forgetful. I'm sure she is talking about those who make excuses because deep down in their heart, they are not willing to obey and to follow the call. Let's assure that God knows our hearts. He knows when we are trying our best. No service is too small when it is done with joy and wholeheartedness. It doesn't matter where we may be or how old we are. Christ invites us to take up the duty that presents itself. Put our mind on what we are doing in all our work represent Christ. Let me continue to read the parable about the talents. Verse 19 in Matthew 25. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. What does it mean when it says to settle accounts? That means when the Lord returns, he will give attention to the accounts of his servants the invested return of every talent he had given them before he left. He do that because the result of the work will reveal the character of the worker. Those who have received the five talents and the two talents return to the Lord and trust the gift with the increase. And they did not take credit to themselves because the talents are not theirs to begin with. The talents were entrusted to them, were given to them. They see that they were only doing their own duties. So in spiritual sense, what it denotes is, if the Savior did not bless us with his love and grace, we would be bankrupt spiritually for eternity. And what he gives us, we need to grow from it. Although everything belongs to the Lord, yet when he received the talents in double, he approves and rewards the workers as though the merit were all theirs. His expression is full of joy and satisfaction, and it gives him great pleasure that through them he can put to use his blessings. Let me read to you Matthew twenty-five twenty-one. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, he said. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. For every service and every sacrifice, the Lord rewards his servants, not because it is a debt he owes, but because his heart is overflowing with love and tenderness. For us, it is our faithfulness, our loyalty to God, and doing His work out of love that will please Him. At the end of time, every work that His faithful followers have done will be noted and be rewarded by gaining the privilege to participate His work there. In heaven what we shall be in heaven is the reflection of what we are now in character and in how we serve remember Christ said of himself Matthew 20 28 the Son of Man came not to be minister unto but to minister and we know that Christ's work on earth is still his work in heaven right now. And our reward for working with Christ in this world is the privilege of being able to continue working with him in the world to come, which will be so much greater. Let us continue with the parable. Matthew 25, verse 24 to 25. Then the man who had received one bag of gold or one talent 
Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. The last servant represents Christians who make excuses of the neglect of God's gifts. They look upon God as severe and tyrannical, as if he's watching to spy out their mistakes and ready to judge them. They accuse God of demanding to take what he has never given. In another word, there are many who in their hearts accuse God of being a hard master because they don't think it is fair that God claims their everything as his. And even their service, God claimed as his. The author responds to that accusation. She said, we can bring to God nothing that is already his. Let's read 1 Chronicle 29, 14. All things come of thee, said King David, and of thine own we have given thee. All things are God's, not only by creation, but by redemption also. Therefore, the charge that God is a hard master, reaping where he has not sown, is false. But the master does not deny the charge of the evil servant. Although his accusation is without base, but he take him on his own ground and show him that his action is without excuse. Ways and means that have been provided for him so that his talent might have been improved to the master's profit. Verse 27 of Matthew 25. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Our Heavenly Father requires no more or less than He has given us ability to do. He lays upon His servants no burdens that they are not able to bear. Psalms 103.14 He knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. All that he desires from us, we can give because of his divine grace. Another verse in the Bible. Unto whom ever much is given, of him shall be much required. But when we give ourselves wholly to God, and in our work follow his directions, he makes himself responsible for his accomplishment. God makes himself responsible for his accomplishment. Can you imagine that? We shouldn't think of failure because we are cooperating with the one who knows no failure. The author said we should not even talk about our own weakness and inability because this shows we distrust God and denying his word. Moreover, when we complain that the burden is too heavy or refuse the responsibilities that he gives us, we are actually saying, just like that unfaithful servant in the parable, that God is a hard master, that he requires us what he did not give us power to do. Some people said the last servant is a humble servant because he accepts his inability the author said, true humility is different. To be humble doesn't mean deficient of intellect, lack of aspiration, and fear of failure. The last servant did not even bother to use his common sense to put the money in the bank to earn some interest. The author said, real humility fulfills God's call by depending upon his strength. 
God chooses his workers as he see fits. He sometimes selects the humblest person to do the greatest work so that his power is revealed. We human have our own standard and we categorize one person is great and the other is not, but God does not follow our standards. We are not to suppose that what is great to us must be great to God or that what is small to us must be small to him. Therefore, it is not for us to judge our own talents too. And what responsibility we are to take. We are to take up the responsibility that God appoints, fulfilling his purpose. And we, if we are worried about the duty that he gives us, go to him for help and he will give us peace. This is what the author said. Whatever our work, God is honored by wholehearted, cheerful service. He is pleased when we take up our duties with gratitude, rejoicing that we are accounted worthy to be co-laborer with him. Let us continue with the parable, Matthew 25, 28. So take the bag of gold or talent from him that give it to the one who has ten bags. That is what happened to the last servant. His gift was rewarded to the faithful worker. This is not only talking about what happens at the final judgment, but also about what will happen gradually in his present life. The author said, as in the natural so in the spiritual world, every power unused will weaken and decay. Activity is the law of life. Idleness is death. Last point. 1 Corinthians twelve seven. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So all of us have given gift from the Holy Spirit. And we are to employ these gifts to bless others. God gives us blessings so we can bless others with salvation. In summary, there is a bunch of serious advice here in this chapter. After I read it, actually, I felt a bit discouraged. But then I remember some biblical history, and that lifted me up. Remember the lives of the patriots and the prophets? We see how they also had many struggles when carrying out God's commands. Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and on and on. They were weak just like us, frequently fall under temptations. And yet we see through the grace of God, they ultimately conquered their difficulties. A good example is King David. We will read how he had his ups and downs, but God, has, but God was there to provide help for him. And he will provide help for us too. Let me read from Psalms 121 verse 1 to 3. David said, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Isn't that wonderful? Happy Sabbath.